All right, good morning, everybody. Taking a slight break from fractions and putting a new twist on an old concept. And welcome to Math Lesson 92, dividing by two-digit numbers. So to start off with, when you're trying to divide by two-digit numbers, if you're fuzzy on your multiplication facts, one little tip would be try to round the divisor to see where to start dividing. So if you're not sure, I'm going to know for a fact I'm going to have to be dividing into 25 to start off with, right? So my first quotient number is going to go right here. If you're not sure, and hopefully you do, how many times 12 is going to divide into 25, well, go ahead and round the divisor. In this case, think of this 12 as 10. How many 10s would go into 25? 2. So how many times would 12 go into 25? Hey, 2 still fits, right? So when you multiply back, you're not multiplying back your estimated divisor. You're really using the real divisor of 12. 2 times 12 is 24, right? Multiply it back, subtract it out. What's 5 minus 4 is going to be 1. Bring down your next number. How many times does 12 divide into 10? Zero times, right? If I had 12 people coming over and only 10 chairs, I don't have a place for everybody. Multiplies back for 0, and it's going to subtract for 10, right? Now that's a pretty big remainder, but remember it just has to be smaller than the divisor so we can get away with remainder 10. Let's try some that's a little bit trickier. 987 divided by 32, so I know I'm going to start dividing here. My first quotient number is going to go right on top of the 8. 32 times what is going to get us close to 98? Well, where to start? Let's round 32 down to 30. Then I think I could do it three times, because 3 times 30 is 90. So 3 times 32, the real divisor we're working with, that's going to be 96, right? This is where all that mental math preparation came in handy. 98 minus 96, that's going to leave us 2. And bring down your final digit, your 7. How many times does 32 divide into 27? 0 times, right? Multiply it back for 0 and subtract it for the final of 27. Again, an awful big remainder, but it is smaller than our divisor, so that's okay. We can have remainder 27 as long as it's smaller than the divisor of 32. Okay, 7,654 divided by 30. Hopefully you know we're going to start dividing into the 76. And if you have no idea where to start, round your divisor down. How many times would 30 divide into 76? Well, I think that would be 2 times, right? Because 2 times 30 is 60. So let's try 2 times when the divisor is 33. 2 times 33 is 66, right? Would we multiply back? We're using the real divisor, not our estimate. Let's get ready to subtract now. 76 minus 66, that's going to give us 10. Bring down my next number, that 5, and I'm getting ready to divide all over again. 33 times what? Gets me close to 105. Well, if you're not sure, let's take a look at 30. 30 times what gets me close to 105? Hopefully you know that would be 3 because 3 times 30 is 90. 
and 3 times 33, the real divisor we're working with, that's 99. So we have 105, and we're going to go and subtract 99, which leaves us 6. Bring down our last and final number of that 4, 33 divides into 64 how many times? Now this is kind of tricky because 30 will divide into 64 two times, right? But if I tried using a 2, 2 times 33 is 66. That's not going to work. So I can't use 2. I better bring it down a little bit smaller and I can only use 1 here, right? 64 minus 33. 4 minus 3 is 1. 6 minus 3 is 3. I have 31 left over, but my divisor is 33, so I can write it as remainder 31. It just has to be smaller than the divisor. 1,290. We're dividing by 22. So my first quotient digit can't go on the 12. I'm going to have to go all the way here into 129. That's where I'm going to start writing. So 22 divided into 129. Well, let's go in around 22 to 20 and see if that helps. Are you figuring out where to start? I think I'd probably like to start with 6, but let's check it out. 22 times 6 is actually going to be 132, isn't it? If you needed scratch paper to figure that one out, and this happens sometimes, dividing by larger numbers. So I know 6 is too large, I better use 5. So I'm going to multiply it back, 22 times 5 is 110. If you can't do that mentally in your head, don't worry about it. That's why we have lots of scratch paper, right? 129 minus 110, that's going to leave me 19. Bring down your final zero, and I'm back at it again. How many times does 22 divide into 190? Well, 20 times what is going to get me close to 90? In that case, I think it would be 9. Let's try and see if it works. Here I might even have to use some scratch paper myself. 22 times 9. Is this actually going to fit? 2 times 9 is 18. 9 times 2 is 18 plus 1 more is 198. No, it is too big. So I won't be able to use 9. I will have to go back and erase. What is the next smallest number after 9? I want to try 8. Now let's go and try 22 times 8. Can we do this mentally or should we set it up on scratch paper? I'll go 22 times 8, starting off with 8 times 2, and that would give us 16, right? I'll have to write down my 6, carry my 1. 8 times 2 is 16 again, plus 1 more. 22 times 8 gives us 176. Don't feel afraid to use scratch paper. You're going to come up with parts of the problem that you're going to have to do it. Now I go and subtract 0 minus 6. I'll have to go and borrow from that 9. And now I have 10 minus 6. That's 4. 8 minus 7. That is 1. And 1 minus 1 is 0. So I have 58 remainder 14. As long as my remainder is smaller than my divisor. All right, just one more little quick bit of review. I know we went over this, but it's been a while. 
and remembering how to check a division problem. Even though the numbers are getting bigger, the algorithm has not changed. First, we have to multiply the quotient times the divisor. Whatever number you have on top times the divisor. Then you go and add any remainder to that answer. And if you did it correctly, the number should equal the dividend. So let's find out right now. We have 375 divided by 49, and I have an answer of 7 remainder 30. Let's find out if we divided this correctly or not. So I'm going to start off with the quotient times the divisor, 49 times 7, and we have 343 there. Then we're going to go and add on any remainder, just adding this time. So my remainder is 30, so I'm going to go and add 30 here. 343 plus 30 more is a grand total of 373. Then we take a look at that answer and compare it to the dividend. Did we divide this problem out correctly? The answer is no, we did not, because if we did it correctly, it should equal the dividend. So we talked about it before, but we'll have to mention it again here. When you estimate dividing, you want to round the divisor to the nearest tens place. But then the tricky part is you want to round the dividend to the nearest number that will divide evenly with the rounded divisor. And we call this a compatible number since it divides evenly. So if I was going to try to estimate 222 divided by 32, well, I'd go and round the divisor down to 30, right? But let's look at this 22. 22, if I'm using 3, I would have 21 as a multiple of 3. So I could use 210 as a multiple of 30, right? And that way, if I'm estimating it, I would know the estimated answer would be 7. Okay, let's try a couple like this. So they're asking us to use compatible numbers to estimate the quotient, right? So I'm going to rethink this. Instead of trying to divide by 31, round down to the nearest tens of 30. So this 25, what do I have in the 3 row that's close to 25? Hey, here it is. 24, right? It's not necessarily you're rounding up or rounding down. You're getting as close to a number that will divide evenly as possible. And then just put in one extra zero. 240 is as close to 253 that will still divide evenly. So, 30 times what gets me close to 240? That answer would be 8 because it multiplies back evenly for 240 and it's going to subtract down for 0, right? So the estimated quotient would be 8. The actual real quotient, you'd end up having a remainder on this, wouldn't you? Let's try one more. We're going to use compatible numbers again. So instead of trying to use 43, round him down to the nearest 10. And that makes 40 our estimated divisor, right? So let's go ahead and look in the 4 row. I want to look for something close to 33. What do I have close to 33? That would be 32, right? So I want to use 320 for my estimated dividend. I'm not necessarily rounding up or rounding down. 
I just want to use something compatible so it's going to divide out evenly. How many times is 40 divide into 320? That answer would be 8 because it multiplies back for 320 and it's going to subtract 4, 0, right? That is the one thing that is different when estimating with dividing. You have to use a compatible dividend. Okay, that is the end. You are definitely going to want to scratch a piece of paper and a pencil, and good luck on the Socrative quiz.